The 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars sat 10 minutes away from the franchise's first Super Bowl. After years spent picking at the top of draft after draft and shelling out for free agents, the pieces clicked perfectly. The Jaguars found success by getting a bunch of stars to play as a team. There were the pass rushers. Yannick Ngakwe, Dante Fowler Jr., Calais Campbell, a 2017 first-team All-Pro defensive end and second-team defensive tackle. Malik Jackson and Marcel Darius manned the trenches, while linebackers Telvin Smith and Paul Puzlesny cleaned everything up behind them. Puzlesny in particular kept this defense going, a veteran leader making sure everyone stayed on assignment. The first and second team All-Pro corners, Jalen Ramsey and A.J. Boye, further solidified this group. Ramsey was arguably the star of this show, both for his physical shutdown play as well as his, let's call it, well-earned confidence. This defense was special. Few squads were on their level in any one category, let alone as a total package. Offensively, no one outrushed this team in 2017 thanks to Leonard Fournette, who gave Blake Bortles someone to lean on as he guided the offense. They became the highest scoring team in Jaguars franchise history, and won their first division title in 18 years. The coach who got them there in 1999 was back too. Tom Coughlin returned to the team to oversee the roster, and their first year together worked out all right. They won their first playoff game in a decade, then stunned Pittsburgh in a shootout where the Jaguars never trailed, and found themselves in their first AFC championship since 2000. Armed with enough talent to threaten the league for years to come, these Jaguars sat moments away from the franchise's first Super Bowl appearance. Or, and it pains me to say this, maybe not. Blake Bortles outplayed Tom Brady. Dante Fowler Jr. harassed the living legend. Jacksonville's defense made New England's run game non-existent. The first 50 minutes of that AFC Championship game couldn't have gone better for the Jaguars. They led 20 to 10, and neither team showed any sign that the outcome would change. What looked like the final nail in New England's coffin came early in the fourth. Desperate, the Patriots went into their bag of tricks, which beautifully set up Deion Lewis behind a bulldozer of blockers. But Miles Jack almost casually came in from the right and forced a fumble, recovered the fumble, and had a clear path to the end zone. One problem, the referees blew their whistles. Yes, they said he had the ball, but also that Jack was down. What could have just as easily been ruled seven points for Jacksonville instead led to a Jags three and out. A 10 point lead with this defense still felt solid though, especially after Marcel Darius sacked Brady, which led to a third and 18. But right here, Danny Amendola proved he's more than just a fun name to say. His 21 yard reception turned the tide. Four plays later, he finished the drive, cutting the Jags lead to three. With five minutes to play, Amendola's 20-yard punt return set New England up at Jacksonville's 30, and once again, Brady found Amendola, whose amazing toe-tapper put the Pats up four. And after sputtering the entire fourth quarter, Jacksonville's offense couldn't mount a comeback of their own. They failed to convert on fourth down, the defense failed to corral Deion Lewis as he iced the game, and instead of an unexpected victory, the Jaguars' improbable fourth quarter collapse became official. Jacksonville made some mental errors, at times tried to protect their lead too much, but the nearly 10-point underdogs would have needed perfection against the Patriots. That defeat, while hard to swallow, still showed the evolution of this team, a result they could build upon, especially considering Jacksonville's young roster. Strengthening, or at least maintaining that roster was exactly why they brought Coughlin into the mix. While David Caldwell kept the general manager position he'd held since 2013, Coughlin's title of executive vice president of football operations really just meant he got the final word with this roster. But the 2018 offseason came with a couple head scratchers. First up, Bortles. His time with the Jags had been troublingly inconsistent for a top three pick. But back in 2017, the Jags had picked up his fifth year option in a way that guaranteed he'd stick around for 2018. Instead of leaving it at that, 
this offseason, Jacksonville tacked on a three-year extension. Granted, as Bill Barnwell pointed out, that move itself wasn't necessarily a bad one, it just raised questions about Jacksonville's future plans for the position. As for Bortles' pass catchers, Coughlin elected to re-sign Marquise Lee, a serviceable receiver, but it came at the expense of Allen Robinson. Robinson had already proven capable of playing as one of the league's best. Granted, he tore his ACL to start 2017 and would cost a little more than Lee, but it's not like this team had shied away from spending elsewhere. Now, one move that Coughlin didn't get a say in came when Puzlesny retired, after the first winning season of his 11-year career. Telvin Smith's speech at the retirement ceremony showed just how much the linebacker meant to the Jaguars. As the team prepared for the 2018 season, the defense continued to focus on the guy they needed to replace, specifically the leadership role. Although, right here, Fowler and Ngakwe likely weren't asking what would Paul do. Their post-practice altercation that August became even worse when Ramsey got involved and targeted the media filming the incident. He went so far as to imply that by releasing the video, the Jags would go to war with the reporters. Jacksonville suspended Ramsey and Fowler for one week each, but this sparked an eventful week and year for the Jags All-Pro cornerback, who kind of became the headliner of Jacksonville's woes. In the midst of his suspension, GQ published an interview they'd done with Ramsey, where among many topics, he rattled off his thoughts on some of the league's quarterbacks. Most of the focus fell on the jabs. Matt Ryan, overrated. Josh Allen, trash. Eli and Roethlisberger, only good because of their receivers. Fortunately, when the season began, Ramsey didn't have to eat his words immediately. Jacksonville jumped out to a 3-1 start, which included a win over the Giants, where the defense got a pick six out of Manning. They followed that with some convincing payback against New England. The lone loss in that first month also was due to an offense without Fournette, who injured his hamstring in week one, the start to his own eventful season, which we'll get to. But the wheels got wobbly in week five, with five turnovers from Bortles. Then they completely fell off a week later against Dallas. Following the blowout, defenders mentioned guys being unsure on their assignments, but they also viewed it as a blip, something that this team could correct. Well, they didn't. Those two losses sparked a seven-game losing streak. And while the defense attempted to figure things out, they'd have to do so without Dante Fowler Jr. The Jaguars shipped the former third overall pick off to the Rams, getting ahead of an inevitable departure that would have come in free agency. In the midst of Jacksonville's losing streak, Ramsey once again comfortably spoke his mind hinting at his future also being elsewhere. A week later, Adam Schefter added to that topic, using some extremely careful phrasing to report Ramsey could be on the move in the offseason. And a week after that, Fournette swung the spotlight away from Ramsey by swinging his fist at the Bills' Shaq Lawson. He left the bench to get involved in a brawl, so an ejection turned into a suspension which capped off the losing streak. So. Jacksonville had one star hinting at leaving, and another whose actions convinced Coughlin to void the remaining guaranteed money in his contract. The Jaguars plummeted to a five-win season after being moments away from the Super Bowl. Following their Week 17 loss, Coughlin put Fournette on blast because he and fellow running back TJ Yeldon spent most of the game on the bench away from their teammates. That same day, Jaguars owner Shad Khan said he wouldn't break up the band, but made it clear that 2018 necessitated improvement. Coughlin heard that and got to work. First, a meeting with Fournette that actually, allegedly went well. After they patched things up, Coughlin got out the sledgehammer. Some minor moves cleared a little bit of cap space, but with less than three million to work with at the start of free agency, Coughlin needed to break the party up. First, Malik Jackson. Jacksonville cut ties with the defensive tackle halfway through a six-year deal, saving $11 million by saying farewell to one of their six defensive pro bowlers from 2017. Now, why did the Jaguars need that cap space? Three words, 
Big Nick Foles. Jacksonville handed out the largest contract in franchise history to the recent Super Bowl MVP. Signing Foles sealed Bortles' fate. His release came after 2018 where Bortles finished as one of the worst passers in the league. But also before the QB could play a single snap of that three-year extension Jacksonville gave him one year earlier. The move came with a good amount of dead money, further justifying the questions around the contract in the first place. Coughlin, though, said he'd do it all the same way. Then again, I can't really picture Coughlin feeling regret too often. This is the same guy who called out two of the defensive stars for skipping voluntary practices. Admittedly, Coughlin didn't call out Ramsey and Smith by name, but since they were the only two players not in attendance, folks connected the dots. The NFL, on behalf of the Players Association, quickly warned the Jaguars about comments like this. Smith responded a few weeks later by announcing that wouldn't be the only football activities he'd miss. The linebacker stepped away from the team without even telling Jacksonville first. Ramsey, though, was great at communicating. He said the team knew that without a new deal, the corner wouldn't be there. And when talking about that new deal, Ramsey felt strongly about his self-worth. So strongly that Ramsey tied it into his training camp entrance. It's worth noting that Adidas sponsored this bit, meaning Ramsey got paid while asking to get paid. Genius. The Jaguars, though, weren't budging. They told Ramsey's agent that no extension would come. It wasn't just the corner, though. Ngakwe, Jacksonville's star defensive end, also looked to get a new contract. But when he declined the Jaguars' initial offer, Coughlin abruptly broke off negotiations. That led to the pass rusher holding out during training camp, a move that he likely wished had been brought to you by Adidas. After an offseason full of headlines, Jacksonville likely appreciated the distraction that just playing football can offer. In the first quarter of week one, Foles suffered a broken clavicle. In week two, Ramsey got in a sideline altercation with head coach Doug Marone. The very next day, Ramsey told the Jaguars that he wanted to be traded. That request got leaked against Ramsey's wishes, who had hoped to not be a distraction to the team. But a few days after that, a conversation came out that ruined any chance of that happening. During a podcast interview, Ramsey shared that his time with the team was done that following week two, some disrespectful things were said to him by the organization. It made it clear that he had no issues with his teammates, the fans, even the coaches. It all had to do with the front office. Ramsey played in week three, hugged some teammates and coaches, and then was gone. First, reports said he had the flu. Then a back injury kept him out. And on September 25th, he left the team for the birth of his daughter a move that would allow him to be away as long as he wanted without consequence. It ended up being three weeks. Jacksonville found a trade partner in the Rams. And five days after the trade, the all-pro corner was playing football again. But back in Jacksonville, things went further south on and off the field. While Jacksonville benched their QB with a record contract for a mustachioed rookie, the Jags front office got thrown under a player-driven bus. The NFLPA put out a statement that warned players about signing with Jacksonville. The Players Association had one grievance filed against Jacksonville over the team's repeated violations of the collective bargaining agreement. They had required players to use the team facilities for rehab and medical needs, then fined players who elected not to. In one specific case, the team fined Fowler 25 times, totaling over $700,000. The NFLPA's statement added that 25% of all the grievances filed by players over the previous two years had been against Jacksonville. Oh, Coughlin, you punishment-loving idiot. It shouldn't be too surprising for the man who made his players practice in the same Florida heat that was killing livestock or whom Hall of Famers openly admitted to hating. Two days after the report came out, Coughlin, for the second time, left the Jaguars in disgrace. By now, Jacksonville couldn't hide from the issues that had burrowed deep into this team. 
Far quicker than anyone could have expected, they were back to rebuilding. They said farewell to Marcel Darius, the guy who almost single-handedly fixed Jacksonville's run defense. Next, Calais Campbell went to Baltimore for a fifth round pick. In just three seasons, Campbell earned the fourth most sacks in team history, including the single season franchise record. The Jags flipped AJ Boye for another fourth rounder, leaving just a pair of stars who'd had their own issues with the franchise. Ngakwe had started the offseason by making his intentions pretty clear, but Jacksonville franchised him regardless. With no intention of signing, Ngakwe took his frustrations to Twitter, where he got in a back and forth with the owner's son, who he called a clown. Eventually, the last remaining pro bowler from 2017 got his wish via trade to Minnesota. And the very next day, the Jaguars called it quits with Fournette. In a fairly surprising move, they released the former fourth overall pick, committing to some slightly less experienced runners. In just two and a half years, this team hit a new low following the nearly total roster overhaul. But these depths also allow hope to grow. A new coach coming in, a new generational quarterback on the horizon, an easy way to forget how far the Jaguars collapsed. They'd drafted, traded, used free agency to assemble an undeniably absurd defense plus a devastating ground game. They earned a genuine, although unexpected, chance to win it all. But when they went down, they committed to going down. While in the end, they just had the one season of greatness. Holy shit, was that one year fun. Hey, thanks for watching. For another Tom Coughlin related collapse, enjoy the downfall of the New York football giants. Or take a Coughlin break with this. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and tell me about your go-to burger toppings below.